When creating web applications, it's very common to have a landing page where you can sign up for a newsletter. So in this video, we're going to see how we can implement that in Flutter. If you like these kind of videos, please let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. And also, of course, checking out Patreon down below in the description. I will also link some stuff you need to check out for the documentation of setting up cloud functions and stuff like that. And let's just get started. So this is one of the applications that I'm building, which is called Listwell. And here you can see that I have this card called join our newsletter, where we can write in a mail. And when we hit subscribe, you should see a loading indication. And then after the loading indication, we should have some kind of response from the server. And here we can see that we then got a response called check your email for confirmation. And that will simply just send an email confirmation so we don't get spammed to our mailing list. So let's see how we can implement this. So what we will start off with is pretty much creating the widget which will contain all of the data and state for that newsletter. So to begin, we're going to create a stateful widget. We're simply going to have all the state inside the stateful widget. And that's because I don't want to complicate things further. So here we have our newsletter card where we have the build method. So we start off first with creating our four variables. The first one is form key, and that's because we're going to use a form. And then we're going to have three variables, which is the email, the sent response, and also a flag for its loading. And we're going to instantiate that as false. Now we're also going to have a submit function. We're not going to add logic yet. So first off, we're going to return a card. And inside this card, we're going to use the set elevation to eight. So we get a nice elevation and also set a rounded borders of eight. For the child, we're going to add a form, which also has the form key that we created earlier. And then we also have a padding. So for the child, we simply have a column so we can just place everything on top of each other. We start with some spacing and then add a text. So first off, we're going to have our title, which is just called join our newsletter. And I'm simply just using the theme of the application. And you can simply use whatever you want. If you have static theming, that's up to you. We're going to align that text to the center, add some more spacing, and then just keep adding some text. So for example, here we have be one of the first to be notified. And this is just a subheader. After some spacing, we're going to then add our text field. I have a custom design text field here, which has a container with some padding. And we also have the text form field, which contains the actual unsaved function. So this unsaved function, when this is called on the key or the form key, we're going to set our email variable to the email we get from the form. We have some simple validation and you can have some real validation in your application. This is just checking if the form is empty or not. Then we're going to add another spacing and we're then going to check if we are loading. So if we are loading, we're going to display a circular loading indicator. And I'm just going to set a color of static for the primary color of the application. Then for the else statement, we're going to use a spread operator with an array. And the reason we're doing this is because we don't want to have uh, multiple widgets in this condition. So first off, we're going to use to check if we have a sent response. If we do not have a sent response, we're going to use to display the subscriber button. And of course, you can use to replace this custom raised button with a raised button, for example. And then we're going to, on the on tab, call our function. For the else statement, so if we have a response back, we're going to use to display a text with the sent response and some styling for that text. We then add in the end a sized box for just some spacing at the bottom. So for our submit function, we're then going to check the validate function. And this say will call the function from the text form field. So if I just scroll back up, that will be the unsaved right here. So going back to the function, we're going to create a try catch because we're now going to do our HTTP call. So first off, we're going to set the state to is loading. So just indicate that we are now creating the REST API call. 
So for the response, we're going to await the HTTP post. Here we're going to add our cloud function URL. And this is what you get when you actually deploy your cl cloud function. We're just going to set this to a placeholder for now. And when you are adding yours, you're going to replace this with your URL to your cloud function. And then after that, we're then going to add our headers. And then for the body, we're going to use the encode and send a email. And that will be the email the user uh, entered in the field. If we get a response of 200, we're going to simply set the state. So for example, the sent response will now be check your email for confirmation and the is loading is now false. If it was not successful, we're going to display the response.body and this can be shown to whatever you want. And then we're going to set the is loading to false as well. For the catch statement, we're simply going to print out that something went wrong and we're going to set the is loading to false. And that's all we have to do in this newsletter card. So now moving over to the cloud function. So if you're not sure on how to set up a cloud function, I will link the documentation down in the description. So in the index.ts file, because I'm using TypeScript, we're going to start by adding our import statements. So we're going to add our Firebase function import, as well as the MailChimp one. And this will be have to be added with npm. You can find that in the description as well. And you can read about course down in the description as well. I will link to all of the materials down in the description. So then we're going to instantiate a variable called course handler. Now we have our MailChimp ID. So when you sign up for MailChimp, you should be able to get a MailChimp ID, which you can find in their documentation, how you would get it. And then also the API key for that MailChimp client. We're going to create our variable called MailChimp and then a try catch statement. So here we're going to instantiate our MailChimp with our API key. And then for the catch statement, we'll simply print out to the console that something went wrong. And all of this you can find in the logs of Firebase functions. Now we're going to create our export function. So we're going to write export MailChimp and then we're going to set that to HTTP request. So for the function, we're going to have a request and response. We're also going to use our course handler so we don't get the course problems when calling it from Flutter Web. Then we're going to take out the email that we sent in the last uh, request. So we're going to do that by calling the request.body and then we have the email. And that will get out our email from that request. And then we're going to add our try catch. So first off, we will add some logging. We're going to start off by saying that we are adding the user. And then we're going to make our post request. And this post request can be found in the documentation of MailChimp. We're simply going to call lists and then add our MailChimp ID and then members. We're going to have the email address of the email that was sent and also set the status of pending. So you can have different statuses and the pending one will send an email confirmation to that user. So after we've done that, we're going to console log. So if this was successful, pretty much, we're going to then say that we added the user with that email of status pending to the mail MailChimp audience. Then we're going to send a response back to the client which has a status of 200 and we're going to just send a message of success adding the user to the MailChimp list. Now if we didn't succeed in making the request we're going to print out that we had some kind of error and we're going to send the error back to the client so we can also see what was happening. So when we now deploy this cloud function you'll be able to see everything in your cloud Firestore and then we just have to deploy the cloud function and when we have done that, we can make our request with Flutter Web. So again, just to reiterate, this is the card that we created. When we then type in our email, we're going to uh, add that to the email variable. So for example, testing at gmail.com. When we hit subscribe, we're going to make our request to the cloud functions API. And then that one is going to make the API call to the MailChimp. The reason we're doing it this way is so we can handle the course. 
So when we would then hit subscribe, we will get that email confirmation to that email. And when we then press on that email, we will then be added to that email list. If you like this video, please let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. Also, if you're interested in the application that I'm building, feel free to sign up on the newsletter. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.